What do these three books have in common? Any guesses? They are three of the most commonly challenged and banned books in the United States. A study by the American Library Association found that more than 1,500 books were challenged or banned by schools, libraries, and universities in 2021. Most were written by or about LGBTQIA or black individuals. For comparison, the association noted just 273 challenges or bans in 2020. Even children's books are coming under attack. They include a book called Anti-Racist Baby uh, by I Ibram Kendi. Do you agree with this book that is being taught with kids that, that babies are racist? It was a symbolic moment of just how much people like Senator Cruz is trying to distract from the real issue or even to demonize materials and books that are actually good for children, helpful for children, allow children to be able to operate in this highly uh, unequal and multiracial world. Book banning in the United States is nothing new. For decades, there have been cries to remove certain books off shelves and out of the classroom. Many book banning efforts historically focused on depictions of slavery, segregation, and racism. One of the most famously banned books, To Kill a Mockingbird by Harper Lee, was published in 1960. Honors Harper Lee for her outstanding contribution to the great literary tradition of America. It topped the list of most challenged books for years, despite earning a Pulitzer Prize, being adapted into an Oscar-winning film, and being generally regarded as one of the most important novels in a generation. In our courts, all men are created equal. Nowadays, the book is a mainstay in curriculums across the country, but the practice of book banning is finding new life and growing to include both classic novels and newer works. We're in a moment of intense contestation over issues of diversity, inclusion. Let's say you take these books out of the library. What are you gonna do with them? You gonna put them in the street? Light them on fire? What you, where, where are they going? Represent Sexton. I don't have a clue, but I would burn them. What we're seeing is people, politicians tapping into people's frustration, their anxiety about these changes, and pointing to book bans as a kind of rallying cry to say, you know, here's a way that we can push back these tides that we don't agree with. Parents and politicians commonly cite things like profanity, political indoctrination, and sexually and racially explicit language as reasons for wanting a book to be banned. You all are going to hear what our children are hearing in books. And don't stop me. Public school teachers and librarians are at the forefront of this battle. You know, the reason certain stories, like you think Shakespeare, like lasts through the centuries is because there are themes that are just timeless. Love, friendship, betrayal, war, death. And so all of these themes are concurrent through the new books now that have seemed to kind of garner the censorship and the ire of certain people. They're thematically still the same at the heart of them. It's just the characters in that story engaging in that theme of love, discovery, self-identification, whatever it might be, look different. The dangers of censoring books with diverse characters are twofold. These books allow children to see people who look like them, represented in novels, helping them feel less alone. They also provide an opportunity for readers to learn about those who aren't like them, people who come from diverse backgrounds. And then the kind of window aspect is for other people and students to be able to see outside themselves, which I think you know kind of builds those bridges, creates more empathy when you can walk a mile in someone else's shoes and understand something from their perspective. That's something that you just can't verbalize in a, a lesson. Like, you have to walk through a story in a book to get both of those things. The reason why I stood against my, my school district's book ban was because I didn't want future African-American kids to go through some of the things I went through growing up. Books that highlight our differences and teach others how to address diversity are crucial. These books shouldn't be up for debate. Books are one of the tools that allow us to be lifelong learners. Of all the things we could be banning, these folks are banning books, but it also demonstrates just the power of books. Books aren't dangerous. At least they're not dangerous to, 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 to those of us who want to create an equitable and just society.